CISOs, we don't want to be the department of no. We don't want to be the ones that say what you can do. We want to be the ones that are saying, go ahead, move fast. I've got your back. And when you focus on data, when you actually know what data the enterprise has, you're able to quantify risk. You're able to communicate risk in a manner that we haven't been able to before, right? Yeah. Risk is not just about vulnerabilities. Yeah. It's a critical vulnerability. It's no. It's also about what's the impact. Should somebody exploit that vulnerability? Yeah. What is going to be the impact to our business? And mm. when you understand the data landscape, you understand the data impact, you can communicate that to your business stakeholders in a way that everybody understands. People understand what it means for their organization yeah. to lose 100,000 customer records. They yeah. don't necessarily understand what it means for some vulnerability in an EC2 instance to be exploited. Yeah. Hey, have you tried looking at the data problem in your organization? And I know you might think that hey, I don't deal with data because I'm part of security or that's the responsibility of the data team, which is working in the big data project. But I had this interesting conversation with Yotham from Sierra and it made me kind of think about this in a different way. A lot of us would know that there's a data sprawl problem in most organizations. I can't imagine an organization that does not have a data sprawl problem, but people don't know what data sprawl is. Data sprawl basically means that some data that you are aware of is expected to be just in one place in the organization, maybe AWS S3 bucket or Azure drop storage, but it may also exist on a developer's laptop or a network person's laptop or someone else's laptop or any other endpoint that you may not assume that the data should exist there because one day for whatever reason, as she's the developer decided to copy across some of that information so that they can always delete later on, or maybe a data scientist did, but that was never removed from it. So in this conversation with Yotam, who is the CEO of Sierra, we spoke about who is responsible for data security in an organization. Is it the big data team or is it the security people? Or why is data a problem today versus all these years of working on a data field? Why has data suddenly become top of mind for a lot of people? Data security has become a thing. Who should be running a data security project? Why do you even start a data security project in the first place? And a lot more conversation around why data security requires a lot more love than what it has been given for all these years, especially when you may already have an existing data policy, but do you really know people are following it? So all that and a lot more in this episode, as always, I would appreciate if you know someone who's working on a data or data security problem, if you share the episode with them. And as always, if you're here for the second or third time, I would really appreciate if you take a moment to just drop in a review on our iTunes podcast or drop in a comment if you have a question, or if you're watching this on YouTube or LinkedIn, it definitely helps us know what should we be working on as well as how much you like the episode and if you want us to do more of these episodes as well. But I hope you enjoy this episode and I hope you enjoy the rest of the day as well. Enjoy this conversation with your thumb from Sierra around data security and I look forward to talking to you online. Talk to you soon. Peace. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Cartoon Podcast. Today I'm with your thumb. Welcome to the show, your thumb. Thank so, you, sis. What was your part to your current role, man? I'm your thumb, Segev. I'm the co-founder and CEO for Sierra. Yep. And I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having me. And what was your part to your current role, man? Like, so where you are today, what was the kind of background that you came from? So cybersecurity has been my passion for almost 15 years now. Wow. I think that for me, cybersecurity was a very complex problem, a problem that's made up of systems and systems, people, processes, technology. Yeah. And it requires unique thinking and unique approaches in order to actually be able to drive an impact and uh, solve these problems. Yeah, yeah. That was always my passion throughout my career in the Israeli military. And I think that specifically to the position that I'm in today, uh, I would say that the most meaningful experience that I've had to prepare me for it was uh, being an instructor. So I spent two years, two and a half years out of my military career uh, being an instructor in Talpiot, Israel's uh, Elite Technological Leadership Academy, yeah. which I'm a graduate of. Yeah. And uh, in 8200 in the cyber, uh, cyber security training courses. Nice. Spent my youth as a youth instructor for many years. What do you mean youth? You're still pretty young, man. Like, you're still my youth. Uh, I'm in my teens. <laughs> I did a year of volunteer work before the military, being a youth counselor, youth instructor. Yeah. I think yeah. That, that gave me the aptitude to understand that when you're building organizations, it's all about the people, right? Uh, and it's all yeah. about how you enable the people to get the maximum out of themselves. Yeah, yeah. And you have to lead by example, but you also have to create the right atmosphere, the right climate, the right culture for your people to succeed and for your people to, to carry it forward. Yeah, and maybe talking about carrying forward data security, why is that getting us so much attention these days, man? I think that when we enter the data security space, we looked at a few changes that were happening in the world. Yeah. We said, okay, 
these changes are going to put the focus on data. It's yeah. inevitable. Yeah. Those yeah. changes were, first of all, the cloud migration, the move from controlling our infrastructure to outsourcing our infrastructure. Yeah. You move from a on-premise infrastructure to cloud infrastructure to yeah. pass platform as a service yeah. and to SaaS, software as a service. Yeah. And when you look at these new consumption models of technology of software, yeah. the only layer that is consistently the enterprise's responsibility to secure is the data itself. It is, what yeah. exactly are you responsible for in Office 365, in Salesforce, in Snowflake? You're responsible for the data. Yeah. You're responsible for the access to that data. Yeah. And you're responsible for the configurations of the system. Yeah. That's all that's left. That's the unifying layer for the new world we live in. That's the layer that's going to be the most consistent across the enterprise stack. Yeah. That's the layer that organizations today are focusing on and regulators are focusing on yeah. and hackers are focusing on. Everyone so wants data. It definitely deserves attention. Yeah. And I mean, what was traditionally done? Because I mean, I imagine to what you said, now people have cloud, people have SaaS, people have all these things. Now they have abstracted infrastructure. Yeah. How was it done traditionally compared to like, well, challenges you just spoke about. So if we look at the old world, yeah. in the old world, the king of data security was DLP, data yes. loss prevention. Oh yes. And DLP was all about, let's keep the data, the sensitive data within our four walls. Yeah. <laughs> well, we don't have four walls anymore. No. We don't have a perimeter anymore. Yeah. We have a presence in AWS. We have a presence in Azure. We have a presence in GCP. The data scientists want to use Snowflake. Office 365 is full of data and permissions. Nobody can get their hands and feet around. That's the new reality. So keeping the data in is not enough. No. You have to know what data really makes the difference. You have to be able to classify, to contextualize the data, to understand what its value to your business is. Yeah. And only through that are you actually able to put the appropriate controls, policies, guardrails around it. And to your point about guardrails, is there like native things in cloud that people can use? So, you know, because DLP is... Well, I think it's a gap in the cloud world, but I'm sure you have your opinion about it as well. Is there a cloud native way of managing data at all? So I think that we're the cloud native way of managing data yeah. in many regards, Sayera, and companies like us tackling this challenge. Yeah. I think that when you look at what's happening in the cloud space, the pace, the velocity of data, the complexity of data, the variety of data, yeah. it's uncomprehendable, right? Mm. Organizations tell us, oh, we think we have 100 terabytes of data in the cloud. We come in, we connect, they have 10 petabytes. Oh. People just don't have a grasp on what's going on in their cloud environments from a data perspective. Yeah, yeah. And the data spoil is truly extraordinary. So what drives this? So what would be a reason for someone to start, oh, I'm going to start a data security project. Like, what would trigger that? So I think many people understand that in the past, we had a garage and the garage had four walls. <laughs> and there's only so much junk you can pile up in the of your four walls. Yeah. At some point, it gets full. You have you, to build an extension to the garage. You have to do something. Find a new house. You have to re renegotiate your contract with Oracle. Yeah. <laughs> but in the cloud, everybody is welcoming your junk as yeah. much of it as possible. Yeah. Put more data in, put yeah. more data in, copy it, replicate it, duplicate it. Have some ghost backups, have some ghost data stores, have some ghost snapshots. That's the reality in the cloud. Yeah. And security people are trained. We're almost grown to think about risk. Yep, that's and right. security people understand where the problems are going to come from. Yeah. And they have a sentiment that they understand that what's happening with data yeah. in these environments is not going to end up good for them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Whether it's on the privacy front with 4% uh, annual GDP fines from GDPR, yeah. or whether it's specific regulations to your industry, financial regulations, the New York DFS, healthcare regulations, yeah. or whether it's your customer's trust in your brand, in your uh, company, the ability to do business with you and having you keep their data safe. Yeah. Data has very high uh, stakes to it. Yeah. And everybody yep. understands that focusing security on it is is the call of the day. And because I imagine a lot of people listening, listening to this way also think that, am I too late in this journey to start this? Or at what stage do you recommend people should start looking at data security projects? Could do your point. The trigger point could be happening right now as well, but I mean, it could be a company that's been collecting data for years before that. But is there a good time to start this? So I think the, the best time is now. Okay. It's always the best time in my mind for many things, but yeah. specifically for this journey. Yeah. And I think that we've all gotten a wake up call from the world of technology with chat GPT, with generative AI. Yeah. I think that really changed the mentality for many CISOs, CIOs, CTOs that I've seen. Yeah. understand that if they don't focus on data in their enterprise today, yeah. they're going to be left behind, mm. right? The organization is moving forward. Organizations are 
competing with each other based yeah. on their understanding of the data they have, their ability yeah. to monetize the data they have. Yeah. That's the business advantage you have in the modern world. Yeah. If yeah. you don't double down on understanding that data, securing that data, and allowing your organization to be agile with it, yeah. to move fast, to innovate, to adapt to the new technologies. If you don't do that, you're going to be a straggler. Yeah. And it's a winner-take-all world. Yeah. Stragglers are not going to have much left to eat. Almost like when you're starting off on the data security project, are there obvious, like say, they hear, oh my God, your thumb is right, I need to start something today. Are there any technical or non-technical, or maybe even both technical and non-technical challenges you can think that people would face immediately more as they start a data security project? So I think cloud-native companies have been able to make data security initiatives very accessible right. from a technology perspective. Yeah. I think the biggest challenge is the organizational resistance. People are afraid. People don't want to know. Uh, I'm hearing from many, many of the practitioners that we're working with that their peers are concerned. They're worried that once we find out, we'll have to do something about it. Yeah. And we won't necessarily have more resources to do something about it. And I think that that's maybe one of the worst sentiments in our industry. Yeah. Like burying our head in the sand, ignoring the realities. Like nothing is happening, order, nothing is happening, nothing is happening. <laughs> in, in order to not face them. And yeah. I think that every leader in enterprises today, yeah. conservative as they may be, understand that it's better to know about risk and decide how we deal with it than to not know. Right? Yeah. And I think that it's our call as an industry, it's our place in society yeah. to protect our organizations, to improve their security. Yeah. Like, yeah. We're not custodians of just policy. No, we're not. We have a job to actually improve our organization's security posture, yeah. to make a difference, yeah. and, and to make sure that the foundations of trust that society stands on, which yeah. is the fact that we can trust our banks, we can trust our hospitals, we can trust our institutions to actually protect information and keep safeguard it well. Yeah. That's our job as an industry. So ignoring it is, in my mind, is, is unacceptable. Actually, you're right. Because as a first principle, what most organizations care about is data. And people usually are scared of data breaches. They're not scared about, I have a really old Windows Vista server that's running in my environment. They're more concerned about the fact that is there any product, production data that may end up in public or somewhere. And that's what's the scary part is. That's the opportunity. What you're saying, yeah. that's the opportunity of focusing on data from a security perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. CISOs, we don't want to be the department of no. We don't want to be the ones that say what you can do. We want to be the ones that are saying, go ahead, move fast, I've got your back. Yeah, yeah. And when you focus on data, yeah. when you actually know what data the enterprise has, you're able to quantify risk, you're able to communicate risk yeah. in a manner that we haven't been able to before. Right? Yeah. Risk is not just about vulnerabilities. Yeah. It's a critical vulnerability. It's, no, mm. it's also about what's the impact. Yeah. Should somebody abuse, should somebody exploit that vulnerability? Yeah. What is going to be the impact to our business? And mm. when you understand the data landscape, yeah. you understand the data impact, you can communicate that to your business stakeholders in a way that everybody understands. People understand what it means for their organization yeah. to lose 100,000 customer records. Yeah, They yeah. don't necessarily understand what it means for some vulnerability in an EC2 instance to be exploited. Yeah, you, what you're really trying to find out from a data security project is the probability of it. Yes, at the onset, like, but how often does that happen when data is going to be on the internet? It's the probability that you're trying to fight for, whether as an organization we're comfortable to say that I know where all my data is, I don't have a data sprawl, or I understand that oh, I don't have anything PII in the cloud or whatever. I think I love the direction we've taken. I also feel for people to have a vision for what this would look like ideally, what does success look like for a data security project? We can't save the world, yeah. but we definitely can make a dent big enough that we feel we made a difference. So what would you say the success thing would be for a data security project? So I think that a data security project or a data security program, maybe better said, is exactly like every other security program. It's built from the same foundations, from the same layers. The first thing you want is an inventory. Yep. You want to understand what assets you have, which assets are more valuable. Yeah. You have to have that basic inventory. Yeah. The second stage is policy. What is our baseline? What does good look like? Yeah. Right? And I think that once you have a good inventory, building that policy is not that hard. No. You can really say, okay, European data shouldn't be in the US. We all understand that. We yeah. all understand that's a problem. Yeah. Now let's eliminate if we have any problems like that existing. Let's take care of them. Yeah. Let's make sure that if it happens in the future, 
we alerted about it and we were able to close up the loop on it in a timely fashion. Yeah, okay. And the, the third stage is remediation and enforcement. Yeah, right? yeah. After you understand what good looks like, keep your environment in the state of good, yeah. even though it's very dynamic, even though data stores pop up and down, even though you're acquiring companies, even though data is being collected in every application by every employee in the company, yeah. and it's moving all the time, right? So you're taking care of something that's like liquid, it's like water. Yeah. It's all over the place and it's moving all the time. Yeah. But if you have automatic controls in place, yeah. you can actually do that. You can say what is critical, what shouldn't happen, and alert and be able to, to really find that needle in the haystack and alert only about the things that make an impact for the organization. I love that. I love that. I, I, actually, maybe that reminds me of one more thing that people are normally, like even with the cloud problem, it's normally the question of who owns this. In a data security world, who owns this? Like the whole concept of CDO or chief data officer. And who do you think should own data security? So I think there's no doubt that the CISO owns data security. Okay. That doesn't mean that the CISO owns data. Right? Oh, yes. Okay. Data is an enterprise problem. It's that, a shared responsibility. That yeah. has many stakeholders in it. The chief data officer, the chief privacy officer, the CIO, the CTO, and the business units themselves. Yep. I think that the CISO, through the ownership of data security, actually has an opportunity to be the hero. Yeah. Actually yeah. has an opportunity to bring in the best technology because that's what we have in the security space. Yeah. To be the one to supply the, the company with the best visibility. Yeah. And not only help protect the data, but help the company derive more value from the data it has. Yeah. Help the company leverage the data for more users. Be the one that tells the business, hey, did you know we have all of this? We can really, we can do something with it. Yeah, yeah. And do you find that the right skill set does exist in a company? Like, what would be a right way to look at the team skill set a CISO may have to look at if they're trying to solve this problem themselves? So I think the security organizations are very well positioned okay. to lead the charge in this. Because when I look at what Sayera is doing, we're trying to leverage the existing processes, workflows, and systems that already they exist mm. within the security organization in order to operationalize data security yeah. in a way that wasn't possible before. Right. Vulnerability management, SOC, incident response. These are the processes that we're uh, plugging into yeah. without changing them. Using the existing processes, using the existing workforce that you have, just plugging in more insight, more visibility, a new dimension, the data dimension. Ah, oh, I love it, man. Oh, this has been really valuable conversation. I think I'm sure a lot of people would walk away from this conversation with a lot of data insights. Where can people find you on the internet? Know more about what you're up to, data security and all of that. Where can people find you on the internet? Sayera, C-Y-E-R-A. I love it. Sayera. Uh, it's almost like a song, a Saira. <laughs> like, <laughs> should I write a song about it? No, but I'll put that in the show notes as well. But dude, thanks so much for coming on the show, man. Thank I really you, appreciate Shish. this. Thank you for having me. Thanks everyone Thank for you. watching as well. See you next one. Peace.